when you start a session, roll plus nothing. And there's some business about death's door there, but I'm not a death's door, so. Not with that attitude, you're not. <laughs> I got a five. Nice. An entirely innocent use of an incredibly cursed object. This useless lesbian being fucking useless. I read a great paper back in my anthropology degree. What does Bastard have going for him? What nightmares have you been hab having up until this point? The nightmare that Karina has been, has had on and off for a while, and it tends to kind of um, do variations on a theme. It's usually she is in some unfamiliar, dangerous place, and it has like a, a maze-like element to it where she's like trying to move increasingly fast through hallways, or sometimes it's through trees, or sometimes it's through caves. Um, but she's looking desperately for something. She knows it's really, really important that she find it. And sometimes she thinks she has to like, use it and other times she thinks she has to destroy it and other times she thinks she just has to keep someone else from getting it but she's looking for it more and more frantically she can't find it and she's becoming increasingly more terrified about the fact that she can't find it and then she becomes aware that there's something following her in the darkness um and then usually what happens is she gets to like she turns a corner and um whatever has been following her has somehow gotten in front of her and she wakes up like she feels like she's been attacked like something jumps out at her she can never get like a good glimpse at it but she tends to wake up like in a cold sweat with her heart racing if you had to put one adjective to the, the thing that's chasing you unnatural like there's something very wrong about it which of those like key primal fears like flavors mm. this this nightmare um i think that one's more what if i'm not cut out for this yeah that makes sense so do you have you been having that dream leaving up leaving leading up to this point or do you think you have this dream tonight well like that's okay. the dream she's been having for several years and it's like a variation uh, on it like sometimes like the said scenery will change like sometimes she's in a cave sometimes she's in the woods sometimes she's in like this weird stone labyrinth other time and so like and again what she's supposed to do with whatever she's looking for tends to vary also again like sometimes she's supposed to destroy it sometimes it's something sure. important she has to use it sometimes she just has to get there before whatever's following her gets to it um sometimes but the thing following you is on the ceiling <laughs> i mean probably like <laughs> 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 so she's had it before but she has it again tonight okay. um and i think this time it's like in the woods all right cool um okay so when we left off the the our heroes like i believe that you were all still basically at the 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 um the tavern right the public house gorlis had, had been like put to bed by the fire and you know like like uh rian and the the town healer had come to see to him and you know, given Alex some props for, for, you know, getting a good broth into him. But there'd been sort of the, 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 the player level discussion about how Karina would basically plan on just like going out and doing this on her own and not even giving Eilwyn the chance to uh, come along. She wouldn't go alone. She'd probably try to convince Alex to go with her okay. because she's like confident in Alex's ability to handle their shit. So I think we all as players want all three characters to come along. So I guess my question is like, do we want to have this scene in character where like, you know, Karina yeah, basically I'm, just says no or-, or I'm up? down for the scene of like, Karina comes to see Alex to be like, yo, Alex, do you want to come out in the Great Woods and have an adventure? And Alex is like, sure, but only if we bring the kid. And then we okay. have like a bit of a fight about that. Like cool. that sounds like fun. Okay. Okay, cool. Then let's plan on doing that. Um, 
So with that in mind, uh, I think like it gets to be late. You all sort of like have vague plans of we got to go check this out, but no specifics are, you know, plans are laid. But as you all sort of, you know, head out, uh, Caridwin, you know, just sort of like makes makes it clear that that uh, um, uh, that that she's got Gorlus and that she'll take care of him for the night and make sure that he, you know, like keep an eye on him and all that stuff. Uh, she actually like packs up a little, uh, uh, like before you all leave, um, uh, uh, Karina, she kind of like slyly passes you a little fruit tart and, uh, you know, just like, didn't really say anything about it. Just sort of like, you know, puts it, puts it in your hand and, you know, like pats you on the back of the hand before you head out. You Karina, know. I'm very glad that it's very dark. <laughs> and no one can really see how deeply embarrassed and stupid she looks. Um, well, Alex probably can, but... I think Alex just, like, from across the room gives her a look like, I'm not saying anything, but, like, <laughs> you know what my opinions are. I think she she fairly often, like, you know, has a little something for you. Like a, you know, just something that uh, uh, that she knows you'll like, or that she's set aside, or or or, or that sort of thing. Um, and it, I, I think it's probably become a little bit of a ritual over the years. Absolutely yeah. useless. <laughs> <laughs> I'll win. Is Merg still there, or did Merg go home with uh, um, with, with mom? Um, I would imagine Merg went home with mom because they were feeling kind of. Not great. That was why yeah. we were at the public to begin with. Um, and I had something I was going to go do at the at the granary. Oh right, yeah. Like so even if up. even if they're still there, like we're leaving separately. Sure. Once all the excitement started up with Gorlas, they were kind of like, okay, this is clearly I, I, Eilwyn's going to be here a while, uh, and you know they 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 headed back home. So it's probably like I don't know, 10 p.m., 10:30, something like that. Uh, sun's been down for for a good chunk of time. <clears throat> um, unless you want something interesting to happen on the way to the uh, 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 to the granary, that whole thing like goes fine. Um, but it is like kind of like the 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 the, the, uh, the steady rain from earlier that had come through, like that sort of started to let up, and now it's more of a drizzle. Everything's wet and kind of muddy, and as you are approaching home, um, you know, like the whole family's there, right? All three parents and, mm -hmm. you know, Merg's inside. But as you are approaching, uh, what do you, what do you hear, see or hear as you approach that just screams home to you? Gethin is singing. Perry like pops in to harmonize every once in a while. It's very cute, but very musical parents. Is it, uh, uh, I'm assuming it's a song you recognize then? Yeah. They don't usually like sing together during the day because Gethin's out in the fields and Perry's in the tannery. But right. so it's definitely like a, like, hey, welcome home sort of thing. And it's super cute and adorable. Mm. Does your family have a door? Uh, I would imagine so. What does your door look like? The one on the tannery is, you know, basically just an advertisement for the tannery. Like, oh, hey, here's some animal hides carved and that sort of thing. Come um, to the tannery. But the one on our house, I think has a, like, a sheaf of grain and a steaming bowl of soup. Oh. And everything else is kind of, eh stylized along those lines but um centered around like food because perry was like well you know i've got the tannery and that's my thing so let's make this one about the two of you that's really cute mm -hmm. um all right so <clears throat> uh you know like you, you open the door you go in and and they're like uh uh uh, Gethin and, and Perry, like, they, they both sort of, like, see you as you come in, but they don't really stop the song, but, they, you know, both of their smiles yeah. sort of, like, like, light up a little bit, Aww. um, 
and uh, 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 um, Emrys, you know, like comes by, and you know, she's got like another like little, like little bowl of soup. It's, it's like, like ten every, o'clock at night, yeah. Well, it's ten o'clock at night, and everyone keeps like like she has been foisting food on you for so long. Just like mm-hmm. we got to put some meat on your bones, type of thing. <laughs> it's never gonna work. Yeah. All right, so uh, you settle in. Merg's in the corner, and he's you know like like you know like tapping his foot along, um, and he's you know he's still like seems a little off, but he's at least like you can tell he's made th- that they are making a a an, an effort. effort. To, to like you know participate and 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 try and be present. What is a typical later evening in 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 Iowa Iowans life? Probably a lot of like let's sit around the fire and tell stories and sing songs and that sort of just like family bonding shit. Okay, cool. So as the the evening starts to wind down, uh, you know, like like. Yeah, people start to like like Merg's already kind of like crawled off into his corner and fallen asleep. Emerus and and Perry are kind of like talking just sort of like logistics stuff, right? Like um I think Gethin's probably already actually like gone off to to, to head to bed too, because you know, uh like early farmer. morning farmer. Planting, yeah. Um <clears throat> but uh uh Perry and, and, and Emerus are just sort of chatting. It's like they're not saying making anything big or any big deal about it. They're just kind of like talking like what are they gonna be doing the next day? And Emerus just sort of casually is like, Yeah, I think I'm gonna clear out that old shed and um uh I got, I got a bunch of, you know, like I got some new new stuff coming in and Fuck. he's gonna <laughs> He's gonna clear out the shed tonight. Or uh-huh. not tonight, but tomorrow. Or tomorrow. Yeah. I uh, I think I forgot something at the granary. <laughs> um, and so you you make your way out. I no, I don't know that I leave immediately. I think I probably wait for them to to pack to it in. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And, and like pretend I'm going to sleep or something like that. All right. And but so you're gonna wait for them to get to sleep, and then you're gonna sneak out and do the thing. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. So let's put a pin in that, um, and then jump back to Karina and and Alex. Um, <clears throat> So we left you at the public house and you could have this conversation there before you go or... You... I think he probably wants to wait until after they're outside to have sure. this conversation. Yeah, I'm picturing that like, if this is the stables, this door here, uh-huh. and this is the main door of the public house, okay. we just like standing slightly off, you know, the way that we would if we went out to have a smoke. Right. I don't think either of us is having a smoke, but like that kind of vibe. They're outside. Does does Alex say anything about the fruit tart? Yes, like I, I think absolutely. I think Alex just like looks at the fruit tart and kind of chuckles and is like, you know, for all your protesting, it seems to me that this part of your life at least might be simpler than you think. Oh, if only that were true. You're such an optimist. It could be if you let it. As much as I would love to argue with you about that, there was something else I wanted to talk to you about. Between what Gorlis told us and Paradox tracking, I think that I can find this place that he found in the woods, and I think we should go check it out. Um, and I think we should not wait, because I feel like it's... I, I don't mean, know, I have a bad feeling, Alex. The tracks will be old, days old as is. If we let any more of the spring rain fall, there may be no finding it at all. Yeah. I think if we go, we have to go now. Go get my things. Let me go grab Eilwyn and I'll meet you. Uh, wait, hold, hold on. No. Are you joking? She's 16. She's 16 and her sibling is already working in the fields with all the risk that that entails. That is not. And they're only 15. And more importantly, we need them on this. You have a bad feeling about this, so do I. What Gaulus described in the water, a maker ruin. I don't know shit about the makers. I'm not a scholar? You're not a scholar? I don't need to be a scholar. I'm gonna fucking hit it till it stops moving. And then what? The part of what Gaulus described that interests me isn't that this thing leaves its pool and travels two days and comes to trouble the village. It's that whatever was causing this place to grow and to thrive, even so soon after winter, I don't know what in this place is causing that. I can't pick it up and carry it back to the village. We make it through the winter on the strength of this village without any fucking magic. 
I'm not convinced that either of us knows enough to tell whether we should bring it with us or leave it behind. And that's why I think we need Eilwyn. She knows about the makers. She knows about the things below. She knows more than you do, more than I do, more than some of my teachers did. Okay, so let's you and I go check it out. And then if nothing jumps out at us, trying to kill us, we can come back and get the 16 year old once we know it's safe. Were you the one just talking about how urgent it is? If she it makes you feel herself. better, Corinna, I will keep the, her behind me the entire time. And you know full well that I would happily throw my body in between her and any thread. You're not gonna let this go, are you? They smile and they laugh and they're like, look, think of it this way. If we didn't bring her with us, tomorrow morning, she would realize quick enough where we had gone. And how likely do you think it is that she would head out into the Great Wood alone and unguided to yeah, try and find us? And there's a good. cinder egg out there. She's going to be in the Great Woods looking for it either way. It is better that she be with us. You still get to have the conversation with her parents. Yeah, and I think they just raise their hands like, absolutely, like I'm, not tr- I'm not trying to get out of the conversation. I'm just like, think of this as an opportunity. <laughs> uh, okay. okay, so it sounds like Karina's gonna go to bed Alex is going to yeah. go find Eilwyn and, yes. uh, and, and- I want to make sure that, that she's not going to go off on her own tonight. Karina probably tells Alex to say like, we're going to leave at dawn. Pack before bed. Yeah, pack before bed. Meet me at the Great Woods entrance or I'll leave without you. I think what they do instead of going looking for Eilwyn is they just sit themselves down on like a little like hummock of soil and grass at the top of the switchback path. And just like wait for Iowa to show up. <laughs> that's they just kind of like shrug up their hood and then just like sit there in the rain. All right. Well, that's a perfect segue. Iowa everyone has gone to sleep in your house or at least has quieted down. Do you and, and Merg have your own room separate from the parents or is it like one big room, do you think? I assume it's one big room, but there are a couple of lofts. Like sleeping lofts. Merg is actually like like sleeping unquietly, whimpering a little. But yeah, as far as you can tell, everyone's out. Okay, so I'm gonna sneak out. All right. I I imagine that before everyone quieted down, we'd gone in and out a couple of times. Like people had, you know, gone to relieve themselves before going to sleep. Mm-hmm. And I'd made sure to the last time I went out, leave the door slightly ajar. All right. So as uh, not to have to make the unlatch noise. <laughs> or the... <clears throat> right. Yeah. Yeah. And as um, we have established, I can squeeze through very narrow openings. Cool. Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to like make you roll the fight. Right, right, right. Like, I'm just describe- establishing how I'm yeah. sneaking out. Yeah. So yeah, you, you, you slip out. It's still like uh, an overcast night. It's like right between the line of raining and misting. And visibility is kind of kind of crap. It's got that that suppressed sound kind of all around, like where everything just mm-hmm. feels very close. And you can see a couple of lights still on, like vaguely here and there. But yeah, as far as you know, you are out here and alone. Uh, okay, I'm sneaking into that shed. <laughs> I should also probably establish that I have definitely wrapped myself in some sort of heavy wool something, whether it's a blanket or a cloak, who knows, but this skinny little kid is always cold, and this sounds like an absolutely freezing night. Yes, so. probably. Do you have a cloak? I think I think so. Um, if for no other reason than she's been this size for probably eight years now. <laughs> Oh, delightful. All right. So she just hasn't grown out of the, like, little kid cloak. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so you are wrapped in your, you know, your cloak from when you were eight. And yeah. get to the, the little shed. And yeah, like, it's a little bit nerve-wracking to dig everything out. And you just feel like someone's going to, like, appear right behind you any second. You kind of have that, that constant feeling of being watched. But you are able to get it out. And there it is. As tall as you are, awkwardly top-heavy with that kind of green eye. I don't know, maybe like a softball size, greenish cat's eye type gem with that creepy little like claw going around the outside of it. Um, What do you think the material of the shaft is made of? According to the thing, it's pitted black iron. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. 
right. So Eilwyn, as soon as you move like the little tarp or whatever that is like covering the thing and the eye, like you swear that you put it like the actual iris of the eye facing down. And when you pull the thing across, it's just it's like, looking Whoa. at me. It's just looking like right fucking at you. That's not cursed. No, not at all. It is dark. Does it like glow a little bit from inside? Is that how I can see that it's looking at me? Because it's, I didn't bring a light. I'm seeing. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, like at first you're thinking it was, it caught the light from outside. And then you like mm. realize, wait a minute, there's no light for it to catch. And then you look again and it's like, and you're not even seeing it delightful so what do you do well i'm going to grab it and get it out of here i'm not sure where i'm taking it you could of course put it back into the vault but you probably took it out of there for some reason um you could put it in the granary because no one knows the granary like you do and sure. you could pretty easily conspire to, to find a good hiding place for it. Um, or you could store it in Alex's place because Alex's back room, this... you are one of the only people that is allowed in there. Well, Alex's place is on the way to mm. the granary. So if they're not there, because they were still at, the public house talking mm. to Karina when I left. Mm -hmm. So maybe they like didn't go home. I don't know, but you know, it's worth checking. If I can sneak in there. Uh, Are you high in low whiz? This is just taking me right back to yes. working with teenagers. Like honestly. No, I'm actually I'm actually in whiz. Um but it's you know 16 year old whiz. <laughs> There's no stat for good decision making. That's up to the player. Right. We're all doomed. Okay, so you're going to go and, and sneak it into Alex's place? At least check it out. Okay. So you're heading that way. And sure enough, like Alex's place is not far. It's still dark and damp and misty out, right? So you can't see that mm -hmm. far. But you don't see like the telltale glow in the mist of, of there being a light on at their place. Alex, you don't really see this happen, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, I'll when you get up to their house and it's dark and it's quiet and it doesn't look like they've been home tonight. Um, if you're going to let yourself in, this is kind of the perfect opportunity. I think she's still a little bit nervous about it though. Cause like, yeah, it's a dumb idea. I want to be sure he's <laughs> not, or they're not there. You're going to discern realities? I want to get, get her to try and use the staff. Is there a window that you're planning on sticking the, like, like looking in through the, the with the orb? The windows are all too tall for me to see through because I'm- Oh God. I got this periscope. <laughs> maybe it'll, maybe I'll be able to, I don't know. Like, right. it's an entirely innocent funny. use of an this incredibly cursed funny. object. First of all, how does it even occur to you that you could look through the eye? She's read something about this sort of like vision from other eyes or something like that you like are holding it up you close your eyes and you sort of like will yourself to see through the lidless orb yeah okay so first of all before you even roll like you you like it fucking works right like you're like mm -hmm. and you're like oh shit i'm looking around and you can actually like kind of like control how it's looking and you're like it's really dark in there and now is when I want you to roll. And that is plus con. My con is currently zero. I have a, an eight. Okay. Ooh. I choose one. I mean, the obvious one is the orb sees through darkness. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. Yep. So uh, what do you think it looks like when you see through darkness with the orb? I'm not like seeing colors or anything, but it's very right. much like... It's a, it's like an un, untextured uh, 3D render. Oh, interesting. Okay. Like a little bit the energy of like echolocation. Yeah, that's what like, I'm kind of going for. It like builds a picture in your brain of like mm -hmm. where these shapes are. That's really yeah. cool. So reading that way is almost certainly impossible. 
unless it's etched yeah what goes through your brain when you when when it works and you're able to do that this is so cool oh, man the vault's got my back oh no <laughs> this is so neat oh man i don't even i don't i never need to carry torches again i can just carry this you almost huh? immediately like like trip and oh, yeah. stumble and <laughs> oh i'm sure yeah like so excited <laughs> that whoops fell over okay so cool. in fact okay. perhaps it's so excited whoops fell over made noise and alex heard yeah i think that might make sense like alex you hear something like like clatter near your house and you're like well that doesn't sound right um but i'd like to jump back to to karina um and i just want to like get a look into karina's light like like uh, a home oh <clears throat> ah okay yeah i know you've been in stone top for five years but i think it's like relatively recent that you moved into the house yeah maybe the public house has like an extra room that she just mm -hmm. was started out in and then stayed in for sort of an absurdly long time and then was like all right well <laughs> i'm staying I, i'm staying in this town i guess um insert memory here of her like solidifying oh. her decision to leave and then carried when smiles at her and all of her resolve just shatters like glass i i bet also dagmar refused to give you a dog until until you yeah, had a place, like, like, a place of your own yeah for sure <laughs> it's not a train wreck it does it's kind of sparse sure. um like she's got you know she's got clothes she's got her gear she has if caridwen or alex or Iolwen have given her anything like any presents that she's received from people she mm -hmm. would like take take really good care of those and put them somewhere that she can look at them every day what uh what is your favorite present that both Alex and Iolwen each gave you. Alex, I'm kind of putting this out here, so but so correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. I feel like Alex might have gotten good at like some kind of Legosi crafting. Yeah, I think Alex took a bunch of the like uh, herbs and spices and like a bunch of the rarer ones that they'd grown that year and set them aside and made you a perfumed candle that smells like a summer orchard in Lagos. Karina is not convinced this isn't some kind of fucking Healy or magic, but she's so taken with this candle that she yeah. can't even bring herself to protest it. It smells like a ripe orchard full of peaches mm -hmm. and like cardamom and saffron and cinnamon. Yeah. Like it smells like the farthest thing you can imagine from like stone top in the middle of the winter. She would absolutely love that and she would cherish that. It's got a little bow on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay and i'll win um i think i feel like you're the comp troller but you're also sometimes involved in some of the details of trade itself like you are there when traders come in so that you can kind of help manage the um transactions and Karina does do some of that, but she's not always in town because she's often off out with the hunter. So I think one of those times when you were there managing something with traders that had come through from, you are not even really sure where they claimed they'd gone to a bunch of locations. And there was one or two you hadn't ever actually heard of before. Like they came from pretty far away beyond Lagos even. Um, but they just had like, I, I, I'm sure they probably had something that you yourself were like, oh, this is for me, thank you. Um, but they had this little, uh, I don't know what they would call it, like a doll or a figurine, uh, but but this like, kind of like a figurine that looks like a bird in flight. And it's been so cleverly made that it, it looks like it's not, it, it does actually have a stand because it's standing on something, it's not floating in midair. But um, Karina, like that birds are one of the things she really likes um she her family had birds as pets when she was still living in lagos and i think she's only mentioned that like once but you have a very keen eye for detail and when people mention things like you remember them and i think 
you surprised her with that at midwinter and she was not quite good enough to be able to keep herself from showing how delighted and a little emotional that that present made her um, because it was just so like unexpectedly elegant and like showed that you had paid such close attention when she just mentioned this one thing one time i got you a burb <laughs> <laughs> I got you this board. What here, like in your house, what sort of uh, gives away the fact that you haven't lived in Stone Lot for a long time? It's very sparse. It has what she needs. It has gifts from the people she cares about and nothing else. Like, where is the knife that belonged to your grandfather? Where is the this that belonged to your grand? You know, like. Yeah, this is not a place where she spends time with other people. This is a sleeping place, not a yeah. home. Yeah. When you get back there, like, what do you do? you know, do you do anything of particular note or do you just go to bed? She probably does what she told Alex to do, which is like pack a bag before you go to bed. So she gets everything ready for leaving mm -hmm. in the morning. And then I think she does, um, she does a meditation. I bet it's something that you learned up in Barrier Pass because they're big yeah. into to like meditative practice up there. So... She meditates for a while and then she goes to sleep. Okay. When you do get to sleep, the dream, you like, you get another round of those dreams that have been coming and going. Um, mm -hmm. And in particular, like you are, like you said, you're like running through woods and, mm -hmm. and, and, and like the maze is woods this time. But at kind of like that last moment when you make the turn and, mm -hmm. you know, like, like when the thing jumps at you, this mm -hmm. time when you like turn back and then turn forward again you're no longer in the woods that last moment you're in what jumps out at you as like as being like a cellar or almost a mm. kennel or something and you just get have this glimpse of cracked piles of cracked bones just sort of like strewn all around and then the, the like the thing just whoosh, uncoils and, and and that's when you kind of have to like you wake up in a cold sweat. She doesn't really get any sleep after that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, jump back to the to Alex's house. Uh, so Alex, you do hear like, well, that sounds like shenanigans going on at my place. Yeah, and I think like right, despite themselves, like it's been fifteen years. And still the first, like the first place their brain goes is like someone, like s someone came to my house to do violence. Mm -hmm. And it is, and it is a good thing that I am not there because now I can, like now I have the drop and can do like defensive violence on them. Mm -hmm. And then they like shake their head. Cause like, no, this is stone top. Like it probably is, you know, it's probably like some kids throwing rocks or like, you know, one of the chickens has got it like some bullshit. I think they just like get up and walking very softly for such a big, heavy person. They just kind of like vanish into the mist. And like, you know, I, like Alex is not a fox. Alex is not a ranger. You know, Alex is not like a super stealth, like, and now I'm invisible character. But like, they are shockingly good at like moving quietly with the intent of surprising a person for someone like of their size and build. I think they skirt like around behind into this little cluster of houses here and then like yeah, yeah, behind their place by the wall. You end up skirting past the watchtower and yeah. you're like, there's, there's a little part of your brain that goes like, it's really quite good that we don't rely on the watchtower that much. No one up there knows I'm here. Like, it would be mm -hmm. very easy for terrible things to happen to them. Yeah. And they just like file away a note, like maybe we should talk to someone about this. <laughs> so yeah, you kind of like come around to the back side of your house at about the time I'll win. I think you managed to jimmy the door open. So, you, you know, you've heard the <laughs> so of someone, you know, wiggling the door open. Yeah. And I think they know, I think they know the, the like, the particular pattern of how Eilwyn goes about doing it. So I think they like relax, right? The tension goes out of them. They're like, okay, it's just Eilwyn. They pause and wait and let you like set it down 
go inside and then they like walk up the steps to like loom in the doorway. Hi. Um, so uh, Alex, you find Eilwyn in the dark in your room, in your like front room, holding a black pitted iron, wrought iron staff that looks like it ought to weigh as much as she does with a green cat eye like, like thing on the end of it that seems to catch the light in a way that shh, and then you realize there's no light. I think the first thing they do is they like go go over to like the mantelpiece and reach down to where Flint, they always keep like one of their sets of Flint and Tinder and they light a candle and they breathe you know i think there is there is like a there is a traditional prayer to helior that is said whenever you like kindle a light oh yeah i was gonna ask yeah like, and so so that you know so they they spin around with this consecrated flame uh in hand uh yeah and i think they just like they just like raise an eyebrow at Eilwyn. like uh is there anything you would like to say before i start asking questions hi <laughs> um good evening didn't think you were home. Mm. I think they just sigh. And they're like, Eilwen, I'm not going to make you tell me what that is if you don't want to or if you don't trust me with that. You've got a good head on your shoulders and I trust you to ask for help if you need it. If you okay. need a place to store a thing, plenty of space. If you need me to cover for you that you have stolen a thing. No, 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 no nothing like that. that. Nothing. It's, it's, it's mine. It, it's mine. You know, I think they like, uh, yeah, like poke, poke at their hearth a little bit and like stir it back up and put a couple twigs on it and like make, you know, go about the whole ritual of making tea. And soon the smell of like mint, uh, mint tea fills the room. Uh, and they, you know, they put a bit of honey in the mint tea and then they bring you a cup and they've got a cup and they sit down. And they're like, also, uh, I should mention, try not to be up too late tonight. Because Corinna and I are going out into the woods tomorrow to chase after whatever Gorlis was talking about. And I managed, managed to convince her that you should come with. Oh, thank the gods. But I we're thought I was going to have to have that fight. We're leaving at dawn, so. It's, I really want to know what's on that tablet, and I really don't trust either of you to transcribe it correctly. They just shake their head and they're like, I'll try not to be insulted by that. Well, there's like, there's, some of these runes are really similar, and there's a lot mm -hmm. of context, and mm -hmm. you need to know what the context is, and I just, like, are you going to climb into a, a, a pool of stagnant, gross water and, like, make a rubbing? No. That, who would do that? You that need me to, like, read it. No. I, thank you. We are going to have to tell your parents. Well, yeah. I, honestly, I don't expect uh, it'll be no. a problem. No, that'll be fine. We'll promise to tell your mother whatever it is we find. And... Yeah. I'll bring her something. So and they like lean back in their chair and like take a, a pensive sip of tea. What treasure is it that you found this time? It's just, it's, it's useful. That's, you know, um, helps me, helps me see. And their eyebrows just kind of like travel up their forehead. <laughs> When you say it helps you see. It helps me see. And I think it'll, it'll, it'll help. Uh, it'll help me see in, in the pool, like through the, through the murk. Um, and, and in the woods, like, you know, without, without torches in case we, we need to hide. Like I know you're I know you're big on light and light and stuff, but 
sometimes we uh we gotta hide right jeremy <laughs> <laughs> I would like to discern realities. <laughs> this, this whole fucking situation. Yeah, that seems legit. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I need any more description from you than what a you solid what the enough. fuck. <laughs> that is a seven. So ask a question from the discern realities list. What here is not what it appears to be. Uh, mm. And if it would help Jeremy, I'm happy to tell you what this appears to be to Alex. That's actually one of the things I often do when someone asks that question is, tell me what you think is going on. Their dear friend, Eilwyn, is here and has found a magic doodad. They, mm, this magic doodad, they're not, they're not sure about it. They think Eilwyn is currently in control of the situation. Like, you know, mm -hmm. nothing is like possessing Eilwyn or anything, as far as they can tell. I think that is a pretty Sherlock Holmes, accurate... eat your heart out. The thing that's sort of niggling at the back of your mind on this mm -hmm. is, where exactly did this thing come from and mm -hmm. why now? Um, mm -hmm. And also, like, like, oh, you know what? The other thing is, there's something that Eilwyn's not telling you, right? And it's like, like she, like, like she has had a bad experience with this thing already, which is part of what's making her a little bit gun shy about it. Mm -hmm. um, and and she is not telling you about that. They nod and they say, "I have only three questions." Is it dangerous? As dangerous as you are. Ooh, that's not comforting. <laughs> like they control their face very well, but their hand does like clench around the teacup and we see it like wobble a little. Do I need to be worried about where it came from? No. Is there anything you need Is there anything I can do for you to help with it? I don't think so. And then they nod and then they like lower the teacup and they look at you very like intently and they say, even if it's just to talk. Now I think your parents are probably expecting you. I'll stash it in the back and we won't have to mention this to them tomorrow. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and so I think, you know, Alex, like, gets up, takes the thing, takes it back into, like, the back corner of their workshop and, like, leans it in, like, an unused corner. And then just, like, takes a bunch of, like, old, like, go see, like, talismans and charms against, like, <laughs> this and that and the other thing that they took with them when they left like us, and just kind of, like, drapes them over the top of it. That's entirely fair. Yeah. <laughs> The next morning, nothing horrible happens, but you could swear, Alex, that when you put it down, that the eye was facing up. <laughs> and like, when you go back to get it, oh, you must have mm. faced it, you know, placed it face down after all. All right, so what you can see on the board is kind of a rough map of Karina, your general idea of where you'd be going. So getting there uh, with the rain and the wet would take you probably about a day and a half to get there if you were traveling solo, Karina. But with Eilwyn and Alex coming with you, you're pretty sure it's going to take, you know, the better part of two full days to get to that spot. Yeah and then plan on a day lost to backing about at the, um, you know, whatever this ruin is. So when you all sure. are thinking about, you know, uh, uh, supplies and whatnot, you're mm. gonna wanna have enough for at least five days. Ooh, do we have to outfit now? You do. Mm. <gasps> okay. Very exciting. Um, <clears throat> you're gonna need to bring warm gear, uh, cause it's, you know, still early spring and it's been rainy. 
And you'll, of course, need to watch out for Krinwin because they bumped Gorlis on the head. There's a Sindar egg out there, and you do risk drawing its attention. And, of course, you do risk getting lost, particularly on the part when you actually go trying to find this ruin. So the, the first real decision is, do you want to bring a light load, a normal load, or a heavy load? And unless anyone has a particular move that like benefits from only carrying a light load, chances are pretty high that you're going to all want to take a normal load. I'm going medium. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to go medium also. A general rule of thumb is there's no real benefit to pre-selecting items unless you want to absolutely make sure that you have that. So like you absolutely want to make sure that you have a cloak and you absolutely, like Iowan absolutely wants to make sure that, that she's got the staff. So it absolutely makes sense to mark those off. But otherwise, if it's just like, well, it might be nice to have uh, whatever, just leave it as undefined. And then if you decide you want it later, you can decide you have it. Alex definitely has that one Bendis root tucked away inside a pocket. Sure. Uh, should I also roll for my naphtha? Oh, yeah. Good old naphtha. <laughs> also, I'd like to put out there, uh, I think Alex has turned their Bendis root into a candle. Oh, yeah. The Bendis root is yeah. now in wax so that it will, like, burn steadily while filling the air with, like, anti-bad thing smoke. I rolled a four. Oh, oh great. So uh, it's 1d4 minus one uses of naphtha. Uh, so I have three of them. My dog doesn't take up a slot, right? No, like the dog. no, no, no. no. Okay. But your, your bronze shield, <laughs> okay. right? Like, your bronze shield would be something yeah. that, that you probably almost certainly want to bring because... Oh, yeah, for sure. outfitted ourselves. Kat, how you doing? Medium load. I've got a cloak and I have my bronze shield, which is plus one armor. Okay. I assume cool. it's at least as good as the default shield, if not better. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I'm just checking over what everybody's got here. Um, so three undefined, a cloak, a bunch of naphtha, and a horrible arcane artifact. Bendis root, and mostly undefined in cloak. Okay, cool. It does just dawn on me, Eilwyn. You probably want to make sure that you have something to write with. To, oh, that is a that is a thing. I do yeah. need to spend a a diamond on that. Okay, I will do that. Okay, so I don't see anything that's like making me ask a bunch of questions. I mean, because like the notebook, clearly Eilwyn's had this for a long time. You already told me that it's the same cloak that you've been wearing since you were, you know, yep. eight. Uh, Karina, is the cloak that you wear something that you got since you got to Stone Top, or is it something that you showed up in town wearing? I think she's had that since Barriers Pass. I feel like anything she would have had to wear in Barriers Pass is probably, like, much warmer and more reliable than anything she would have gotten since she came to Stone Top. Okay. How do you think it differs from the local cloaks? And the like the local garb, probably heavier wool. Okay. Um, and it might be lined with like some kind of animal fur. Does it have a probably. distinctive pattern, uh, Karina? I think it's much more utilitarian. Okay. But it is like a very good cloak. Like it's very yeah. warm, but it also does not get in her way when she's hunting. Gotcha. So it's designed to be worn, like not just I'm cold, I'm going to bundle up in my cloak, but like I'm going out and doing shit because it's cold all the fucking time and barriers pass and you still have sure. to get your shit done. Cool. Oh man, you know what I'm, I'm picturing like little straps that you can like step into so that yeah. it like doesn't just go billowing around, but actually follows your yeah. footsteps. Cool. So I, like I think Alex's cloak is from Mosh Edge, right? Um, okay. It might. Even, I think it's probably even like two pieces of wool stitched together for like added for intuitive purposes, mm -hmm. and I think the outside of it is like a kind of like you know dark gray, black, bluish kind of color. Uh, but I think the inside is a beautiful like uh, pink color. Is it you know just like a, a cloak that like a nice cloak that you picked up? It's a nice cloak that they picked up. I don't you know it wasn't like given to them by a loved one they left behind in Marsh Edge or any show like that. <laughs> they didn't they didn't make any close friends in Marsh Edge. Fuck that place. All right, so uh, the like everyone gets up at dawn. 
Alex, like it does occur to you that like your absence in the fields today is gonna go is gonna be noticed and felt. Yeah. Um so like I guess who do you who, if anyone, do you let know that you're not gonna be there? Uh I think I go and I let Powell uh know. Okay. Because like um, it yeah. like it's our fields, right? That are gonna feel the feel the absence. Sure. As dawn is breaking their houses, uh, just like a, a flurry of activity with three generations of, of kids coming and going. Um, and he, you know, kind of like Silas, like, well, howdy, neighbor. <clears throat> Morning. You, uh, you packed for a, for a voyage. I, I, I don't know if you heard last night, but Golas came back from the wood injured and babbling about something out there and Rhiannon checked him out and Corinna and Sir Edwin and I all think for once the old goat might actually be telling the truth. Hmm. I think Alex just like lowers their voice so that none of the kids inside hear and I think they just say like very softly and he said he saw something moving in deep water. He uh, gets a little, like, yeah, concerned, right? Yeah, and Alex just, like, grimly nods, like, and so we are going to, like, take care of it. Go with Tor and the failure. I know it'll leave you short. Well, we got it. Don't, you, don't, you don't need to worry about us. Um, just come back. I'll do my best. When uh, uh, Karina starts walking down the path, he kind of like nods in her direction and goes, "You, uh, you watch yourself with that one. She'll get you into trouble." Alex like chuckles and nods and is like, <laughs> "My main intention going along is to keep the other two out of trouble." Good luck with that. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I think they like they like nod 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 goodbye to Powell, and then I don't know that we need to do a scene of it, but I think Alex does like follow through on the promise they made to Corinna and like goes to like swings by Islewins to pick Islewin up and like level with Islewin's parents about like what is yeah. what is going to happen. I I am just curious, like does Isle has Islewin already broached the subject? And or or are you waiting for Alex to come and do the emotional labor? Oh, I've already broached the subject. Like, yeah, we're I, I you don't need me in the fields today. I'm going out in the in the woods with uh, with Alex and and Corinna. No big deal. You can right. tell them why. Yeah. Right. No. <laughs> right. Where is why like, would I, I do that? Alex, you walk in on on uh, Emrys. Giving Eilwyn the 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 twenty quest the twenty questions, yeah, yeah, and just being like, so this is about Gorlas last night, and oh yeah, thing that he yeah. saw. Mm-hmm. You're going art. That's incredibly dangerous. How are you? I'm taking Alex and Corinna. Yeah. It'll How be are you going fine. to be safe? Alex yeah. appears. In the door. <laughs> they're they're going with me. Which honestly, yeah. I think for I think for Emrys is like, oh, okay, Alex is going. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah, Alex I mean, just like nods at Emrys and is like, look, better in company, right? I mm-hmm. thank you. I appreciate it. I'll make sure she remembers to bring you back something interesting. Mm. Yeah, and then I think you know, Alex like looks looks Alwyn up and down and is like, you ready? Let's go. I'm like, as we like walk walk up to the the path. Alex like reaches under their cloak where like tied to their back they had the staff and he just kind of like gently detaches it and like passes it like, to you. Here you go. Did you see anything? I could swear I put it down last night looking up at the ceiling and I woke up and it was looking at the floor. It, it, it does that. Yeah. It didn't like, it seemed to like the charms. Which I think is, you know, is, is like a gentle, a, a meant as a gentle warning, right? Like, is Corina, is she there? Yeah, I think we're probably like coming up into earshot. Okay, mm-hmm. so is the staff visible? Oh yeah, you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, so we like zoom in on her face and there's Kill Bill sirens going <laughs> off in her head. And she just says, I think in a very flat voice, what is that? 
with staff. It has an eye on it. It's just glass. I'll win. It won't be a problem. Alex shrugs and is like, if it turns out to be a problem, I'd rather dispose of it outside the village. But if it's dangerous, I'd rather know now. It's no more dangerous than Alex. Karina laughs outright at that. (laughs) And Alex just gives her this like rueful like, like imagine how I felt here in that. <laughs> Where what Iowan means absolutely is like all of that bullshit in the back room, right? Yeah, that room is full of lie. Is it dangerous? Yeah, yes. yeah, oh, sure, I yeah. But it, if you know what you're doing, you're fine. If that thing is going to do something while we're already dealing with other dangers, I want to know now. It helps me see. What does that mean? She does not respond. All right. I guess fucking go. Okay. Road trip time. <clears throat> okay. Um, so somebody roll me a D6. Four. Four. I put this in the GM's playbook for just this reason. The clouds up ahead are pretty thin and kind of wispy after the the kind of like spending themselves over the overnight. But when you look to the south and where the wind is blowing up from, the uh, um, like you can kind of see a darker line down that way. So uh, expect it to rain more heavily over the next day or two. I also just need to note now before someone like if we forget later. The dog's absolutely with me. Karen oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. How does the dog react to the staff? Dog does not like the staff. <laughs> that seems fair. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so, yeah, Karadoc is n- all too happy to just start heading, like, down the, uh, uh, down the path and, like, into the woods. Um, and, again, you're seeing, like, your friends and family and neighbors and, and like, particularly Eilwyn, like you just have this moment of this is probably the longest single trip you've ever taken like intentionally taken from home and so like well you go down these steps every time what 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 particularly poignant thing do you see as you're about to leave Merg is heading into the fields with Gethin mm-hmm. as we're heading out the opposite direction And it just, like, there is this moment of just eye contact between the two of us. Of, like, everything is going to be normal for you today. And everything is going to be so not normal for me. Mm. And I don't know if this is in just, like, a blip. Or if this is where our paths are separating. And that's just like that's gonna weigh on island for the rest of the day have you gone on any trips out of town before no no Our... my world is stone top the vault and the like maybe a half day around stone top okay. so how do you feel about the idea of going to the great woods like going out hiking into nature away from i'm interested in it it's also a little intimidating but I've got, you know, I've got good company. You guys are going to take care of me. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. The great irony is probably in 10 years, like, I don't know that Alex has ever been beyond, like, mm-hmm. a couple of hours walk out of the village in any direction. The difference is Alex is not particularly nervous. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, They're just you like, have been outside the village, but just not really, like, since you came to Stone Top. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, I know what non-Stone Top <laughs> is like. And I've, like, traveled in the wilderness. I just haven't had cause to do so in a Mm -hmm. while. Karina is obviously not bothered by like the being in the woods part. This is Tuesday. She's just like broody about what about that staff, but also about like what's waiting for them when they get where they're going. Okay. You head down the path, you get down to the bottom of the, 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 like, you know, like the the base of the bluff, right? So Mm -hmm. like go north a little ways and you'll find the vault. 
um, go just like a few, like maybe even less than a hundred feet, probably into the woods. And you, like, you already hear the gurgling of the stream. And then you, you know, like as you approach, um, hear about this. The stream is it's shallow. Um, it's kind of a like a wide uh, shingle on either side with like little bits of like a couple of, of little saplings sticking out of it here and there. A couple of like like spring grasses starting to pop up. Um, <clears throat> but it is, you know, uh, like, like there's the kind of constant rush and, and murmur of it. Um, like the, the, the stream itself is very, is actually moving very quickly right now from the, between the rain and the snow melt. Um, so there's just like a real kind of like current to it, but it's still not particularly deep. Like fording it would be, you know, probably up to your ankles uh, or up to your knees if you're Iowa. And, and uh, <clears throat> I made a short joke. Um, but, uh, so a question for y'all, um, actually, particularly for Karina, since this is kind of your turf here. What little ritual do villagers always perform every time they cross the stream and why? The stream almost has like a, a reputation. And so villagers have taken to being like, um, spare me this time, as they think kind of the, the general sentiment, like not this time. Yeah, I have not. somewhere to be, I have something important to do. If you don't mind me riffing on this, yeah, go for um, it. The idea that that like when you cross over, you tell the stream, "Oh, I'm sorry, don't take me today before I need to." End. And if it's a good enough reason, then the river won't take you, which is why we don't <laughs> casually cross the stream. Exactly. Exactly. So I I think mm. it's it was a local ritual that at first Karina was a little bit like really but um i think she probably knows somebody who i don't think that they died but i think they got swept downstream quite a ways and like we're in a pretty bad way afterwards mm. like we're pretty sick cool i think it happened to dragmar actually mm. Ooh, i like that i think it might have been the, well like one of the last things there's like i am done the river doesn't buy it anymore the river's like it's always gonna be another fucking rabbit dagmar you liar <laughs> don't you fucking try it with me <laughs> all right so um, I'm curious, uh, what truth or lie do you each tell the river as you cross it that, that you like, why it shouldn't take you? Alex, I think just like leaves, leaves a little funeral candle and lights it for the silent twins. And yeah, and then I think they like, they like straighten up and they say, not today, river. I have friends to protect and a thing from below to drown. I think what Karina says is I have a threat to end and someone waiting for me. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and I think what Eilwyn does, she's usually very adherent to this, like I have somewhere else to be. Um, but in her 16 year old hubris clutches her staff and says, I'll see it coming. Oh boy. <laughs> is this the first time Eilwyn has crossed the stream? No. No? Okay. Like she's had legitimate reasons to be out here before and has given those reasons honestly to the river in the past. But this is the first time that you just sort of like grip the staff and, and, and taunt it? Less taunting it and more not really wanting to oh. talk about the the real reason okay like okay so i'm curious what the real reason uh, is though. like isn't the real reason just you want to go see what those runes are the part she doesn't want the river to know about is is the thing in the water like i don't want the water to know i'm investigating water water <laughs> talks that. to each other yeah okay <laughs> There's water okay. here, and I'm going to look at water over there, and I don't want them to know about this. So one thing I do just sort of want to assert is that with the rush and the gurgle of the water, that none of you really heard what the other one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> um, well, obviously, everyone saw Alex get out a candle and light it, but so like you pretty quickly are just getting into this 
like like just like primeval wilderness it's the kind of landscape that swallows people right like yeah. you know and like there's there's a lot of mud since it's early spring and it's been raining a lot your feet are slipping all uh, you know fairly often there's this constant dripping sound coming off of the uh the trees as like the, the you know the 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 rain from the night before just sort of like shifts in the wind um <clears throat> occasionally you catch little snippets snips of bird song as you're traveling um but for the most part it is a gray and brown and wet a few hours corinna what is your favorite kind of bird that sings in the great wood i would say some kind of starling mm. okay so within i don't know i'd say <laughs> I'd say within a couple of hours, you are well beyond the distance Elwyn has ever been into the woods. What's the one thing that is shockingly different than what you expected? How close the underbrush is. You are fighting through, like, clawing brambles and, like, low bushes and everything out here there are maybe like the equivalent of deer paths but right. everything is very very close and tangled and that's not something Iwan has any experience with alex what about you like what is your least favorite part of this as a person with like broad shoulders and wide hips like Anything that expects you to move through a narrow space, particularly with things hanging off your body, like a cloak and a backpack, is fucking uncomfortable and annoying. And like the person who is getting the majority of like getting snagged on things like is, is them. Yes. <laughs> I think they're just like, God, fuck this. <laughs> My question then for Karina is, aside from the obvious, what's the worst part of having to take these two along with you? Oh um, God, they're so loud. <laughs> they're so loud. She's just like, well, it's a good thing I'm not trying to hunt anything today. Because <laughs> everything else is just fucked off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I do think it's funny that Alex is like, what's your favorite bird? And Kurt is like, I don't know, there's no birds here. They've all fucking run in terror from us. So like I said, after a couple of hours of travel, you know, you're really not that far along. Um, like you're thinking, Karina, that you'll probably be able to make these hills by nightfall, but you know that like around midday, you should be getting to some some kind of like steep and, and hilly stuff. There is a rage drake in the area and there's other hunters theoretically and predators that could decide that, that you all might make good meals. But the Sindarag is the chief thing in your mind. What, if anything, are you doing to sort of, like, be aware of that or to try and avoid it or... I'd like to spout lore about what she might know about this. Yeah, yeah, of course. Go ahead and, and roll it. So I got a seven. Oh, all right. So the thing that you do know about Sindarig, they'll attack people and, they like, there are stories of them viciously just, like, tearing people up. When they when they encounter them but they don't hunt people and so like sometimes there's stories of them you know like just sort of passing by sometimes there's stories of, of them just like seeing people and getting the rage on that they're kind of called for but there's no stories of Sindareg seeking people out and stalking them and like treating them as prey i suspect that what karina has said is like Iowan comes after me and alex brings up the rear simply to keep I went in the middle. The and kid. she's not like far, far ahead of them by any means, but I think she tries to keep far enough ahead of them that she can hear a little bit of the forest around them. So I think she's mostly just like being particularly watchful the whole day, trying to listen for obviously the rage drake, but she's keeping in mind that I cannot remember this dude's name to save my fucking life. No. Um, Gorlas. He got attacked by Krinwin out yep. here. She's just, I think being particularly watchful and one of the things that makes Caradoc such a good dog is that he's always very attuned to her but instead of just being super intent on tracking I think he's also like more alert 
Karina, you're staying slightly in, in, in front, keeping aware, watching out for stuff and having the dog sort of like run a perimeter. Is there anything else that, that anyone is doing to like try and change the results of slogging through the woods for like eight hours? Not remotely. All right. I think what I am going to ask you all to do is given the mud and the terrain as it's been described that you're dealing with, I think I'm going to ask for it struggling as one with Khan. Karina, <laughs> since you're used to this and you sort of established yourself as running, you know, being on watch for everything mm -hmm. here, I think it may okay. probably make more sense for you to do Wiz than than Khan. Okay. But I'll win, Alex, like there's no getting around it. This is just a slog. So each of you roll the stat and hold your results for. All right. Did anyone get a six minus? Oh, oh, oh shit. <laughs> All right. Uh, did anyone get a 10 plus? Ooh, okay. That's oh, hilarious. Oh, shit. You know what? Roll with advantage, uh, Karina. Oh, yeah. Sure. Okay. Because you've got the dog. Hey, hey, I do have the dog. Double. Okay, so now I am no longer have a six minus. Okay. Do you, you have a seven to nine? I do have a seven to nine, yeah. Okay, cool. So Alex, like it's it's the old wound, right? It's just acting up and you find yourself falling further and further behind and, and it's just, ugh. Someone else is setting the pace and they have to keep up. Mm. Doesn't leave a lot of room for like, when they start to get tired, they just got to keep pushing and it just becomes like a vicious cycle. So Eilwyn, you can get them out of this jam if you can tell us how. Boy, um... <laughs> Welcome to my puzzle. The first thing that occurs to me is maybe she's like, she's brought some painkiller or something like that from our healer lady, whose name is currently escaping me. Rhiannon. 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 Yes. It's something that she was like, you know, I've seen Alex have this, this little, like this stitch in their side and you know, maybe there's, maybe there's something to that. I don't know. Maybe it's, it's worth like, I'll talk to Rhiannon. Maybe Rhiannon was a little concerned about it too. Cause Alex doesn't usually go out that far and like, eh, just, just take this just to be, just to be safe. So you got some willow bark basically. Yeah. I'll throw it as a small item. Cause it was something specific like you basically just gave yeah. gave them a little bit to chew on and that that uh, that it tastes awful alex oh it's fucking foul little little scraps of it like cut like micro cut the inside of that cheek like it's fucking bad it's not a fun experience and you're not positive that like the, the the pain in your side is going away because of like any medicinal properties as much as it's just so awful to have this in your mouth it's just distracting yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I'd say like maybe around a couple hours past noon, you, you start a, a, a pretty substantial like uphill, right? It's not like like a, a straight climb, but you're definitely like getting higher coming out of a valley. When Caradoc like kind of like comes back onto the trail, it's like, rrr, 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 like like come come on, I got something to show you. And sure enough, like a few paces off of the trail, there is a ripped apart deer carcass with the telltale signs of a, um, well, like huge chunks torn out of it, right? And you're like, that looks like, that, that looks like the Sindadig. So you are pretty sure you're in its territory, but like looking around, you don't see it immediately. I think I take care, I say, be on your guard. She does just like a perimeter of the area looking specifically, I think mm -hmm. there would probably be like some yeah. evidence and yep. then takes the dog in a perimeter to see if she spots like maybe a direction it's moved off in or any other signs of recent passage. Yeah, yeah, this definitely sounds like discerning realities. Okay. Um, Do I get advantage with the dog? Uh, yeah, I absolutely think that the dog is, is helping you on this. Like they're not making it possible. They're actually providing assistance. So that is a seven. Cool. What is about to happen? Probably nothing right now. Based off of what you're seeing here, this probably, this was probably last night and it headed off in a different direction. Okay. 
Um, so there is a very good chance that you're just crossing through its its territory. I think it's okay to keep going, but we just have to be on our watch. I don't see any sign that it's still in the vicinity. Do we need to be worried about our smell? Not right now, I don't think. But it's something we should ask again when we stop for the night. Karina, you are pretty sure that you're going to get to like that lookout that okay. is your choice of camping in this area. Um, you might even get there like a little bit earlier than you expected, you know, like having like a, probably an hour of sunlight, which is nice because then you can actually like make camp with some light instead of yeah. um, having to rush. Okay. So like the places, like these hills are, are uh, you know, like largely limestone hills kind of cut like poking out of the out of the forest. Um, and then like the, the, the far side of them, like the northern edge of them is a, a pretty like bare rock uh, uh, promontory. And this one particular spot sort of overlooks a valley dropping below uh, everything. And mm -hmm. it's a fantastic view, but a terrible fall. <clears throat> um, you know, so the nice thing is there's like a big chunk of stone that you can basically like like lay on the leeward side of the uh, of the stone and like be out of the wind. Um, it's nice and dry because it's basically flat and stone and slightly angled. So like the like when it does rain, it just sort of like washes right off of the area. Um, <clears throat> but it uh, the the downside is that you have to like haul up any like deadfall or anything that you want to burn. And your your if you do light a fire up there, like everything down below can see you. The other thing that that, that kind of jumps out at, at you is the the like that promontory, right? The thing that you can kind of shelter behind in the against the wind. It has petroglyphs carved all around it. Okay. Uh, I see Eilwyn like, yeah. What did they say? Um, you can certainly spell lore about them if you would like to try and figure out what they're saying. I would love to. Oh, I think okay. Karina would help because, like, she's been here before oh, and sure. she's yeah. all right. So I yeah. will lend assistance. What'd you get? I got a four. Uh, eight plus two is ten. Cool. Woo and between the two of you, you are able to figure out that, like, this is a literal sacred site. Like, there is an active spirit that, uh, uh, or a spirit that is tethered here. Ah. <laughs> um, interesting. Front row. Oh, no, no. Uh -huh. So there, there's a spirit that's actually, like, tethered to this stone. And... Like you see symbols for wind and air and things like that. Um, and you're like, but these are fine. These aren't just like markings of like, like, oh, that's what's here or describing it or like paying homage to it. You're like, I'm pretty sure that's a binding mark. <clears throat> and then, like later, you're like, "That's the thing that says don't believe it's lies." Omar, <laughs> can I can 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 I see what I can see? You're gonna like like grab the staff and uh huh. Uh, here we go. <laughs> so, what do the other two see when you do this? Iowans just like trying to get everything ah, like. It's here is my scrunched just... up effort face. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and roll it. Ha! Ah, that's gonna be a uh, six. So that's awesome. Cool. Way to go. Way to go, self. So the orb shows you a terrible vision of some distant oh, yeah. time or place. So you are like doing your scrunched up thing, right? And you're expecting to like, or you're hoping, I guess, this is now two out of three times that that this right. is on your way. You're you're sort of hoping that, that it will open and you'll be able to like kind of see things that are unseen, right? Mm -hmm. And what happens is like it opens and Alex and Karina are not there. The markings are not on the stone. Um 
but what you do see is a someone that has uh, has Eilwyn ever seen a fourth book? She would have been six when they were last seen. She's heard about them much more than she's seen them. Sure. From your memories, what is the most distinctive thing, inhuman trait about the forest folk? They had incredibly large, glassy green eyes. Interesting. Okay. With a, I want to say like that goat like uh, pupil, yeah. the horizontal bar. Yeah. No wonder people in town are nervous about Rhiannon. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right. And, and for the record, like, I don't think Rihanna has those goat eyes, right? Like, no, and I don't think hers are, like, really large either. But, like, I think the <laughs> color is right. And, right. like, that's yeah. enough that people are like, ooh. Green. <laughs> like, really, like, that dragon green. So you, uh, like, like basically what you see up here and you it's not just a, a vision it's like an overwhelming um uh 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 like like experience of being here like to the point where you almost don't realize like <clears throat> well what, you realize that you are seeing this from the perspective of someone who was also there and like going to the imax right <laughs> like really immersive you know and you realize that you're like crouched on the edge of this precipice, like overlooking the forest. You are standing like kind of crouched there next to another forest folk who is crying. Their body language is hunched. And you can like, like kind of a weird uh, 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 hesitation, but also like, you know, like sorrow all kind of bound up. And you know you don't speak the language, but you understand it nonetheless. Mm. And you hear kind of whispering around in the air around you, because it's the only way. If you do it, you can be together. You can, you can be together forever if you do this. It just, it's just a step. It's just a single step. Don't you want to join them? Don't you want to? And, and like you start to realize that like you're trying to stop the person that is on the like, like, like crouched down on the edge. And like you kind of hear that sort of whispering and whipping around in your, in your ears. And then at some point, like the, the, that person says what you think is, I'm sorry. And then they just like step off the edge. <clears throat> and there's this like, and, and that that's when you when you like come to <clears throat> that's horrifying okay thank you what do you think this looks like to other people when you when when it does this to you the things that she's seeing are being expressed through her body language okay so like when it was the the burning stone top it would have looked like running away from fire or you know, cringing or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Um, and Kira so in this like case, it was a lot of like, of and then fall. Yeah, yeah, so that happens. Uh, your 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 teenager has just collapsed in sort of a fit, uh, and is like crying now, uh, whether or not she she thought she was. I need to pause a moment here and be like. As a, as a player, because, yeah. because I don't want to like take your fun toy away from you, but I feel like that Karina as a character, as I've established her, would yeet that thing over the edge of the cliff. I can get it back. You mm -hmm. know what? I think in that case, like, no, you she it, does please. do that. Like, I don't know how, how long of a drop it is. Like if it's easy to like haul your ass all the way down to the bottom. Oh, I'd say like a good, like, 60 70 feet the reason that the staff itself is pitted is because this is not the first time someone has yeeted it away <laughs> from the person who's been using yeah. it the Maybe glass is always unharmed but the eye glass is unharmed but the staff just gets beat yeah. to shit yeah so i when you do come to and you realize mm. like 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 I'll you're definitely out of it but yeah like i think <laughs> alex is just like saying saying her name you come to, you like start to piece together in that kind of weird waking up from a dream thing, like what was a dream and what isn't and what was real. 
Roll play. So that was the thing. Um, Are you where's, okay? Where's my staff? I threw it away. You had a fit and you fell down and you were crying. And you don't seem surprised. It, it helps me see. It helps you see what? You didn't see anything good. Not all the things to be seen are good. That's just how it works sometimes. There aren't just good things out there. I mean, you don't need me to tell you this, right? But sometimes the bad things are important to see. Did you see something that was important to see? I, I think I know what that spirit is that's bound here um, and what it does. So that's, that's good, right? Alex like nods and says, yes, if we're going to sleep here, best to know what knife is at our backs. It wants to push you over the edge. It wants, it wants you to fall. Like apparently what you just did to my goddamn staff. Thanks. I don't read petroglyph. How tightly is this thing bound? I'll give you this as like just off of your 10 plus. And also mm-hmm. I, uh, I'll win sort of putting it together from the vision. Um, like as long as that pet, that, that, that like uh, outcropping like stays intact and no one intentionally like fucks up the 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 runes that are on it the thing is tightly bound um and that sort of like jives partly with karina's you know sort of filling you in on on Mm -hmm. like the fact that the the hunters stay here right like they use this place as a camp spot and they all just sort of like know to not touch the 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 sacred you know uh the 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 spooky spirit or uh, forest folk shit karina you're the expert time to make a call do we sleep here tonight do we move on i don't think there's going to be any better place for us to make camp we have to make camp somewhere stay away from the edge it's not the spirit i'm worried about there's a prayer and a ritual but we need a fire And that's going to get us seen. So if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go get my staff. I don't think there's enough time before the light goes dark. And you just had a fit and trekked all day. I'll go get your fucking staff. Are you worried about much other than the cinder egg if we have a fire? Because I think I have a way to deal with that. I've seen no sign of Crinwin, just the cinder egg. You got a good sense of smell? Good enough. Alex chuckles uh, and like reaches inside their, you know, inside their cloak and pulls out a little like, uh, like unmistakable clay, like vial full of lye. Make a fire. We'll figure it out when I get back. So. I don't know exactly how long it takes her to go down there and grab it. I think she's sort of hoping that the, it will have like broken in two from the fall, but I'm <laughs> guessing. It did not. It's- it takes you some time. Uh, by the time you find it and make your way back up, they will have gotten a fire going and probably have been able to like cook, like basically make dinner. I think as they light this fire, they just like you know, at times they at times they are like uh, praying, um, like in Ligosi. At times there, I think there is a point where they sing, kind of like softly, uh, but like their voice is this like deep, like resonant, rich baritone. They, they sing like one of uh, Helios' songs. Uh, and I would like to invoke the sun god. Uh, which one are you using? I think uh, I know. But... I would like to use Hold Back the Darkness. Ooh. Spirits and creatures of darkness are repelled by your light and cannot approach. I consider both. I think this wind spirit is a spirit of darkness. Mm-hmm. Uh, and more importantly, I'm pretty fucking sure that whatever is inside that stuff is the spirit <laughs> of darkness. <laughs> Cool. Uh, and because it's ongoing, it will last as long as the fire does, and a bundle of firewood will last all night. Great. Let's see how this goes. I got uh, I got a three, Jeremy. <laughs> the whole whole three. All, all right. right. Well, mark it. I'll mark one XP. <laughs> um, 
and I know how the next session's going to start. Oh, fuck me. <clears throat> Us to be so euphemistic before you jeremy i hate you <laughs> i hate you so much oh. <laughs> you made the same joke at the exact same time i'm fucking crying oh my god uh, that's going down on my stars <laughs>